Hey Rhinos, Dr. FJ. We got a lot of craziness going on right now, so I want to talk about freeing up cash in a crisis. So at the time of this video, the coronavirus is going on, but again, this will be applicable to any any kind of adversity you face if a recession hits or like the housing market crashing years ago, or if all of a sudden um, insurance companies stop paying like WorkComp in California like 20 some years ago or 15 years ago. Uh, or Blue Cross almost uh, cut uh, payment in Illinois, and a lot of people were freaking out. So uh, this will be, for any kind of adversity like this, this will be very, very applicable um, for years and years to come to make sure you can operate. And again, the number one priority is to keep the, the business going, turn a profit, and then also take care of your family and your team. And so those are the, the basically the priorities, all right? So to do that, you've got to look or cut luxuries and then variable costs. Sorry, my handwriting stinks. But <laughs> so you, in your uh, business, you have variable and fixed costs or overhead. So a fixed cost would be like rent. You got to pay it, right? Or they kick you out. Um, phones, if you want to use the phones, you've got to pay that power. Uh, electricity, internet, all those are fixed costs, have to be paid no matter what, okay? Now, some marketing may be fixed because you're contracted to it, other maybe not, you know, like I, with this corona going on, my newspaper does typically hit, but after a few weeks, it quit hitting ads that always hit, didn't hit, so I just postponed it, right? I delayed it. I will do it again, but I put that on hold, saving myself, you know, uh, a little bit of cash each month. So knowing you got to know what your variable and fixed costs are, then you got to go through and look at luxuries and variable costs and reduce or cut what's not necessary. So what would be a luxury like cleaners, right? If we're super slow, we can clean the house and the, or my team and I can clean the office. Um, my personal trainer, I put that on hold. Eating out, we, we are eating out very little, only doing it here and there to support small restaurants and local businesses to try to help them get through this as well. So those are some luxuries that we don't need. Obviously, we're not going to go clothes shopping right now and, and little things like that that are obvious. Landscaping, you know, uh, to snow removal. If it were to snow right now, normally I have someone do it. I would put them on hold and I would do it because um, we have the time. It's not necessary. So basically, all those kind of luxuries we're putting on hold. Um, but you got to look at your variable and fixed costs and look at what variable costs just don't make sense right now. Let's put them on hold. You know, maybe supplements, you want to put some on hold or only order the ones that are selling. Like our Corella is selling a lot. We're selling a lot of garlic and golden seal and vitamin C. So those I'll continue to order. Some of the other things we're not selling that much of, so I'm putting that on hold. Inventory, we're making sure we're only ordering things that are absolutely necessary. But we're also looking at what's really sold out and making sure we're staying on top of that so we have hand sanitizer if we were to need it. Um, if this continued on for a few weeks. And as I talked about in our profit forecasting video, the most, the biggest mistake you can make with this is being overly optimistic, okay? So you've got to assume this is going to go on for a long time and you got to look at your overhead, look at your office performance and see where you can free up cash so that you can continue to take care of yourself, take care of your team, and the office will continue to run at a profit. Okay, another strategy you can do is delay... Delay payments. So, like, typically when we get an invoice from another company, we pay it right away. Like that day, my office manager, we get it, we pay it. But usually there's like a 30-day span. So now we're going to pay it on the 29th day. That gives us 29 days to allow the office to operate, to bring cash in, so that we can hopefully keep the cash flow really good. So it's just a little simple thing that frees up a lot of cash, and then you can pay it the last day. You're still, you know, you're still taking care of your end of the deal. Um, but you're just doing it strategically. Also, credit card. If you have a big credit card bill, if something unexpectedly got charged or whatnot, um, like maybe you bought a table and uh, that happened right before everything slowed down. Okay, well now let's just pay the minimum. If you don't have the cash, let's just pay the minimum. You're gonna, you know, get charged interest a little bit, but you'll keep your office rolling. There's no way. There's no reason to pay off that credit card and then have no operating cash in your business checking, your business account. That makes zero sense, okay? So then, then your business, now you can't pay your rent, you're getting shut down. Um, so you may have to just pay the minimum, uh, you know, whatever, the 100, 150 bucks, and wait a month or two or three to pay them the five, 10, 15,000, whatever it is that's on there. 
So just delaying those can make a big difference in freeing up cash flow. And then also delay new capabilities and grow. So maybe you were planning to bring, you know, maybe you were thinking about buying a new table, now we're gonna put that on hold. Or you were starting a new marketing program, well, let's put that on hold. Or you're gonna start some new technology system to, to, so you can text people, well, let's put that on hold. So any new growth, are you gonna buy some, a building or something like that, unless you have the cash. That's why you want to profit forecast, right? If you profit forecast and you and in six months time, if this continues to go on, or even you know nine months, twelve months, and you still have plenty of cash and you're operating at well above a profit, then go ahead and do this. This is only if once you do your profit forecasting, you see ah three, four, five months, things are going to get tight. We're not going to be able to turn a profit. Okay, then we're going to take this step. If you forecast, so forecast first. If you forecast, and then all of a sudden you see. Boom, we're going to be good no matter what. Worst case scenario, we're good in six months. We're good in nine months. Then go ahead and do this. Okay, that's like the super wealthy, uh, you know, the millionaires, the billionaires. These are the moments where they buy and they invest when no one else is because they have the cash. So that's why we talk about saving. And now may be a great time if you have the cash to do some investments and, and, and while everything's dropping, uh, you know, buy low, sell high. These are the times people buy but you gotta have the cash, you gotta plan for the worst case scenario, and you gotta make sure in six, seven, eight months, you're still okay. So if you do your forecasting and things aren't going well, delay new growth, delay capabilities, you may need to delay raises. A good friend of mine works for Kohl or the toilet um, company, they do a lot of other things, but massive billion dollar company, they just aren't doing raises this year. Usually they do a little raise each year, they're putting that on hold. So you may need to delay bonuses or anything like that to make sure you can continue to take care of your team, can take care of your family, and then the office runs at a profit, okay? So these are three of the five steps I teach for freeing up cash flow in a crisis. We did a digital training uh, on this uh, a, a little while back so that people, just to help people. And another thing, in these crises, connect with your Rhino family. Touch base with people once a week, once every couple weeks, okay? Because connecting, knowing you're not alone, having another person there with you, and they can help keep you in check and you keep them in check, all right? Very easy to get negative, but that doesn't do any good. Very easy to complain. That's not productive. It's not accomplishing anything. It's not producing anything. So it's a total waste of time and energy. And remember, after the crisis, there's always a boom. After the droughts come the rains. After the winter, summer's coming. This is what you signed up for. Okay, when you wanted to be a business owner, this is why we train to be smart, to be strategic, to be ready for these moments so that we can get through and thrive. And it goes like this, okay? But when you can handle these moments and handle them comfortably, you're going to kill it, all right? So these are three of the five steps to just strategically keep that cash flow freed up so you can continue um, to take care of your family, take care of your team. Hopefully you've saved some cash. Hopefully you haven't been careless with three or four boats um, and a couple houses and a bunch of cars you don't need uh, that are all leased with these huge payments. Okay, and this is why we teach you to save the cash. Um, but if you haven't, these are the steps to take to make sure you can get through these next few months and then things are gonna boom. This will end, it'll all be fine, but you have to plan for the worst and be prepared for everything, okay? So take really consider this. Uh, because we want you to thrive. We need more successful chiropractors. And together we can change this profession for the better and forever. But we've got to have a lot of super successful chiropractors to do that. Keep charging.